What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? What's Fire him! Fire him! Fire him! Fire him! Shut him! Shut him! Shut him! Shut him! There's a sound warning that I'm giving to people who are encroaching on government vested lands. That those people, the law will not forgive them. It's a whole mess. You are paying for a legitimate document by paying more than the approved, the government approved fees. If you you collude with the grantor or the grantees, all the parties around, and everybody is prepared to lie. And of course, the commission can go, go, go into their minds to find out whether they are lying or not. Land gas thrive largely in areas where economic activities boom, but it appears that is not the only challenge in the land administration system. The allegations of connivance of officials of the Lands Commission with dishonest individuals to illegally acquire lands. People who are not entitled to even grant out leases per Osu have been doing so. Osu lands, government just gives it out without even concern. We need to sit down and then structure ways where it will be a win-win affair and we eliminate the third party. He also attributed the aggression between government and the schools to how untruthful government and the agencies responsible for lands have been. Invariably, we see land commission and the government as our enemies because we believe the sacrifices our forefathers did is bearing no fruits. Population growth, economic development, and rural migration to urban areas have caused rapid expansion of urban centers in Ghana. One reason is that spatial planning, and in particular urban planning, face different social, economic, and political challenges which hinder a structured and planned urban development, therefore causing urban sprawl. Former member of parliament for Ododododio constituency, Ni Takikome, whose jurisdiction encompasses the central business district of Accra, attributes the land use and planning difficulties here on the fact that most multinational companies operating in Accra are keen on having their operational headquarters in here. Whilst I was growing up, I was growing up, I know it wasn't so with lands, although the capital was then here. But you know, Accra now is the capital of Ghana. Therefore, everybody moves from the interlands to Accra. The material time they come, they all wanted a settlement. Some wanted to put up factories, industries and the rest. So definitely, you know, the capital land will become a very high commodity. Many a times, these are the issues. It will come up that a chief has sold a land to two, three people. But many a times, when you meet the chiefs, they may also say they are not the ones. Probably some of the are soldiers and the rest. So you see, that is a, it's an issue. That position resonates with an urban geographer, Professor George Owusu of the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research of the University of Ghana. He has carried out detailed economic research into Ghana's land use planning and management systems. He tells me the whole challenge of land litigation hinges on two issues. Because we have weak institutions, you get it. Even in the midst of plentiful, uh, there are greed tendencies, there are speculative tendencies, and people are getting more than they need, and consequently denying others access to land. Mm. Unfortunately for us in Accra, we seem to be getting um, uh, what do you call it? The bad sides of these two positions I've given you. One, there, um, there's high demand for the land because of the pressure from population, migrants and others moving in. And two, we have weak institutions to deal with um, the land which, which is available. And so consequently, when you put these two, these two factors together, what you have is the chaos you see 
and consequently we keep on um, the price of land keep on going up and in the case, and consequently we have so many people being denied access to land. The Lands Commission has a vision to become the center of excellence for land services delivery with the mission to provide high quality, reliable and efficient services in geographic information, guaranteed tenure, property valuation, surveying and mapping through teamwork and modern technology to stakeholders. But this is just fine English that makes the Lands Commission look good because the myriad of problems in Ghana's land management system is very worrying. If they con con uh, conjure to come up with a fraudulent document mm. and our investigation does not disclose that fraud, then the, the courts can set them aside and the courts have set some of them aside. Because if you collude, it will present a fraudulent document to us. We investigate and uh, nothing uh, reveals that the thing is fraudulent. Later it is found that the thing is fraudulent. But as far is as... It, is it then to suggest that the commission doesn't do due diligence? Oh, well, we do due diligence as much as possible. But you know fraud is... Uh, fraud can, can exist anywhere. Because if you you collude with the grantor or the grantees, all the parties around, and everybody is prepared to lie. And of course, the commission can go, go, go into their minds to find out whether they are lying or not. The strong defense put up by the commission does not take away the fact that many families, clans, too, and government lands have either been encroached or dubiously sold by unscrupulous minds who have taken advantage of the situation. A family sells land in Division A goes to get endorsement from Division B. Oh, and, and the Lands Commission are able to get it registered. Are you following? This is not a matter of, uh, I have to go and check on the ground and all that. Clearly, this document should not go through. Are you following? It should not go through because it is highly contradictory. Because it will have an effect on reversion. Yeah. Who is that family serving? That family traditionally is under Division A. They have disposed land. And because probably they have a certain challenge with their division, instead of it, them to resolve it, they are finding the lazy man's approach. Then they go to Division B to get it endorsed because they have a, a bit of relationship with them. And they get to the commission and they are able to validate it. Why wouldn't they continue? Are you following? Why wouldn't they continue? There are, there's a new trend now. Yusufrat are now having problems with their divisional stools. So they bypass the divisional stools and go to the Omahini. And the Omahini executes. And it gets to the commission and the commission registers. Who is actually perpetrating the problems? <laughs> One other region that has history of land litigation is the Volta region. The long-standing conflict between the people of Alavano and Nkonya has claimed many lives on both sides. The latest was on Sunday, August 27, 2017, when one person was seriously wounded following sporadic gunshots in Alavano. People here are considered by some as flippant people fighting over barren lands. For the Nkonyas who are considered first of the two factions to settle in the area, they are prepared to die to defend their heritage. Even now, as we are sitting here, our minds are on something because they could come anytime. They have been coming, coming from their place across the border to our area to fight even here on the 21st of May this year. <coughs> The yeah, warriors stood at the top of the mountain over here and they were shooting into the town. They shot and killed somebody here. Would you be ready to let go portions of your land so that to, ensure, the, to ensure peace? Let me, so, so that the, the court ruling should be uh, obliterated. Obli obli I cannot do that. Yes, if you need something from me, you can come to me and ask me. We will not compromise with it. What was put there must be there. The Alavanos, on the other hand, accept the fact that the Nkonyans are the original settlers, but have a rather interesting story to tell 
on why they jealously defend the ones who stole territory bequeathed to them by the Nkunyes. Since their migration from Nwache in Togo, they have never lived by any big river. And so he feared uh, his uh, people might get drowned in the river, so they would not settle over there. Then he said, towards the east, no one lives here because there are very wild animals in the area. So Togweto told him, if it's wild animals, then he's okay with it. He's, he could live in a place. He's better off with yeah, wild animals than, than the, river. the river. So they came to the area. In the long run, they found that the wild animals were not actually wild animals. They were human beings clothed in the skins of wild animals. Who were these human beings? That's an interesting revelation. Uh, not to stir any conflict somewhere, I won't give you the names or the name of the traditional area. Anytime they came and the, the, the Nkunya people saw those wild animals emerge from the bush, the men would run away. And then these human beings in the skins of uh, wild, wild animals will capture the women and the children. children and sell them into slavery. Wow. But when the Alabanyo people said, if it's wild animals, we don't have problem, we will stay there. Then they joined some of the Nkunya people on their farms. But the Alabanyo people hid in the bush. And when the wild animals emerged the again from the bush, wild animals. animals emerged from the bush, the Alabanyos managed to pounce on those wild animals. And in the long run, they were found to be human beings in animal skins. The Western region used to be lively peaceful until 2007 when the country discovered oil in commercial quantities. The discovery of oil in commercial quantity and the subsequent production thereon has added value to lands in the Western region. Landowners who use their land for agricultural purposes have now leased out to multinational oil and gas services providers. Uh, after the discovery, two years before the production of oil in commercial quantity in the Jubilee field, we had this high interest mm. of people coming to Ahanta trying to look for properties over here, and which uh, uh, basically has uh, 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 amounted to the current development, the expansion, the, 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 uh, the, the explosion of houses mm. that you can find within uh, 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 the Ahanta area as well. $94,000 per acre, which is the one on the main road. You know, we have the main Trans-West African Highway, which is passing through the Akitinchi Stool Land on both sides. 95000 US dollars per acre. Per acre. Yes. The weak and vulnerable who do not have the financial muscle to engage in a legal tussle are the ones bearing the brunt of the indiscriminate sale of lands. The regional minister, Dr. Kwekwe Friye, who comes from the northern part of the western region, thinks the issues with land litigation and conflicts in the area did not begin with the oil and gas discovery. Litigation is very widespread. You know, at the Alodia level, you know, there are several uh, levels of chieftaincy. So there's a, a what do you call it, um, conflict. And then even in-house, in, 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 in the areas, the area of jurisdiction, we have got sub-chiefs who are also uh, involved in land litigation over their areas of jurisdiction. And then, of course, between families too, and then at uh, individual levels. Because one chief will sell a land to another, one party, and then the other will claim jurisdiction and sell to the other party. So as for land litigation, 
is all over the place and the issues are very complex indeed. Would you say the discovery of oil has added value to lands within the region and so the litigation has seen a rise, if you like? Well, I, I, I suspect you're talking about the coastal belt. Yes, it's there. It must have exacerbated a little bit. But our, it has always been there even before the discovery of oil. Uh, well, the coastal belt, because of offshore oil, which is being discovered, has become a, a, a prime place now. So, yes, yeah, there's a spike in litigation in those areas too. But before then, it was mostly in the forest belt. And now you are the new sheriff in town. What are you doing in your capacity to ensure that we see this challenge fixed? Well, uh, sheriff, I'm not too sure whether I'm the sheriff. The Western Regional uh, Coordinating Council, sometimes those issues, some of them are not purely legal, and some of them are even administrative. So we use our uh, uh, locals to help them resolve them. But I must say that a lot of them are deep-seated. Some of them are deeply embedded in history, and the issues are really very complex. Has land administration helped to, to fix this challenge in any way? Well, not really. The last commission and... I would say, look, it depends. You see, you have to know where you came from. You remember I was one minister for land forestry and mines. It's cleared up some of the legal issues because time was when uh, even certain definitions were even, uh, uh, as it were, in abeyance. That one has been solved, but the problem still persists. <laughs> In Ghana's hierarchical chieftaincy system, chiefs are the custodians of ancestral community lands, culture, customary laws, and traditions which include history. Chiefs have the responsibility to hold the land in trust for generations unborn. The outspoken regent of Akitinchie is one chief who has had a lot of issues with the regional land administration in the western region. What I realized was ignorance. Actually, I saw a lot of ignorance in the Lands Commission itself because sometimes you have a problem where the Lands Commission is writing you a letter uh, based on an issue of which affects maybe uh, chieftaincy matters and then will refer to uh, somebody, somebody uh, uh, a person of a particular family of a particular stool. And then at the same, on the same land, we'll then also see so, so, so of Akitinchi stool. Yeah. So the, 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 the understanding uh, between what family land means and what uh, uh, stool land means needs to be, you know, uh, uh, clarified for employees of the Lands Commission. Because that is where the problem is. The deficiency is with the managers of stool lands, which is the Lands Commission, the survey department, and the town and country planning. The confusion in Ghana's land sector has gone global and has attracted diplomatic attention. Netherlands ambassador to Ghana, his Excellency Ron Straker at the 2017 National Food and Agriculture Show in Tamale cautioned the inefficiencies in the country's land rights is driving away investors. One of the elements I would like to call upon the government to look into, to take action in particular, of course, for all these projects, is the land rights thing. Without guaranteed um, possession of land, security about land, certainty about land, simply the attraction of investment, and in particular foreign investment, remains a problem. If you are not sure about your investment, you are not going to come. So that, I think, is still a main issue. We have many problems, but I think that is still one of the main ones. Real estate and land developer Seydou Abdul Aziz believes the Lands Commission is to blame for the widespread land litigation in the country. The actual point where the swap is done from the party who sold the land to me into my name, that tomorrow, if anybody is supposed to do a search on the land, it will indicate that it's in my name, it's at the records room. And the records room is almost at the tail end of the processes. So 
during the processing, if it has not gotten into the records, and the party I bought the thing from wants to perpetrate mischief, it is highly possible that the person can equally sell to another party without the party recognizing that he has sold to me. Mm. So the records is not empowered enough to even tell, to even tell that this particular parcel of land, we have already received the documentation on it, that is indicating that party A has sold to me. They also receive it. If the person has people in there who are smart enough to push his documentation to it's likely that his documentation can come and bypass mine and he'll get it registered. By the time man gets to the records, it will indicate that party C is the owner of the land. So I bought it from a wrong person. So the issue really, really is not about the party who is perpetrating mischief. It is the institution which is allowing the mischief to go on because they have not streamlined their processes very well and they have not been able to study where the problems are coming from. Regent of Akatenche, would not only point to the land commission as the major cause of the problems in land management. He is convinced that the political establishment contributes to the mess by weakening the chieftaincy institution. From 1900s to the, especially 1940s, 1950s, right up to the 1960s, there were several land leases or farm leases that were legally signed and registered at the Lands Commission. How come today? 60 years after independence, the Lands Commission is entertaining uh, 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 families, you know, within our area to own lands which are traditionally two lands. This is a problem that we have in this country, that those who are put there under our system to uphold the law, abuse the law, and they create their own laws. The sad thing that I, I am seeing at the moment is, first of all, you know, the, 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 the way the chieftaincy institution itself has been brought down by the political establishment of this country. I'm saying so because before independence, there was none who fought for independence, you know, who, who's financed and, you know, helped the previous politicians to get where they had to get. The disposal of farm lands to multinational companies to be converted into service companies has been described by Professor George Owusu of Ise as a dangerous trend that must be curtailed. In the western region and some of these areas where lands are being acquired, and in many cases, these are individuals who are thrown out of the farming livelihood and they have no other alternative. The only livelihood that they know is um, their, 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 their farming. And so if they, if they lose they lose that, it's a big problem. And it's not only that, but also what I see with the destruction of huge chunk of agricultural land as a result of what I'm um, the consequences are really, really, really um, going to be very difficult for many, many people who lose that sort of um, their, their land, because for them, the land is all that they have. I know Boku are no Mawano, Asante Kotokono, Sonny Ebedia Kwabwa. Kumasi, the capital of the Ashanti Kingdom, is considered by many as the region with the best organized chieftaincy institution in the country. It is expected that administering over lands in the Ashanti region is carried out with little controversy. Sadly though, that is not the case. Land management in the region comes with its own problems. The Asante Hene Otunfo II in July 2017 sacked the Secretary of the Land Secretariat at Menshia Palace for illegally disposing of portion of the stool land to a private developer. Then in the same month of July, Nana Kofi Adade, aka Nana Solo, Otunfo II II's palanquin chief was attacked with cutlasses and guns at Tabre in the Kumanwabija district of the Ashanti region. Narrating the incident to me at his palace in Tabre, Nana Adade said he and some elders of the community were attacked by thugs hired by one Mensabunsu who claimed to exercise jurisdiction over the contentious land following a fraudulent sale. Mr. Nancy, 
Otunfo ama kwan se ye metwa asase no me de o mu e ma no enti eno na ye kwa akoto hye a ablante bi de mensa bo nsu e ma alangard fo bi hye ya o mu twetwa ye se kan tutu tutu ni na i am the palanquin chief of otunfo so to to the second his majesty gave me permission to visit the site with a group he had instructed to demarcate the land was on the land were ambushed by langas who came in the company of a self-styled chief Osei Bonsu. Mensa Bonsu no. Na open ten srafu na. Ana otum fo ase ene amon ho sem a wo ye to trust me o ye ntisa akunya na wo ni fi ukura ni ade se wo de be ma no ba fine wo ho pro de be ma no kwa mo. Enti obe pamso ofre atuma no be ja ampa in forward district we na se wo de din na mso wo ye wo hene wo ni wo hene o man dibre bia wa sentiment na I sustained cutlass wounds on my ankle and my head in the process Otumfo has publicly stated that Osei Bonsu is not a royal it is therefore surprising that he carries himself as one Enti se wo do didi so a Asuro na yo de ase na ye wo hene na asase wo te so e de ento atete a o presentage no de ma wo na ono so afa na de na kru no so wa ma kru ni ti ya no so ense se wo hene ase se ama ye so ayi na ti ye so yi so